One above all, and one below all. The most powerful cosmic being in the Marvel Universe is actually a single entity. People all around the world have been fascinated with the concept of celestial beings and cosmic entities. The origin story of cosmic beings in any context is always intriguing whether they believe in it or not. Even works of fiction, such as Marvel for this case, have dealt with the concept in a vague fashion, but also very delicately. It is written in such a way that it ties the universe together perfectly. So let's find out what Marvel's equivalent of an all-encompassing god is, or let's say the creator of the Marvel Omniverse and Multiverse. But before we go on today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. So thank you, and let's begin. Who is this mysterious, dual-natured cosmic entity with opposing personalities? Various cosmic entities in the Marvel Universe have made reference to a supreme being, referred to as the One Above All or the Supreme One. The Living Tribunal is considered to be the representative of this being and it is said to have the power to enforce its will on any cosmos it judges. Other cosmic entities, such as Eternity and Death, are not considered gods themselves, but are still described as all-powerful. The Living Tribunal is considered to be the most supreme power that can be comprehended, but even then, it is said to be more of a servant. The protege once claimed to be the most powerful being ever and attempted to seize the ultimate power, but was absorbed by the Living Tribunal, which proclaimed that there is only one being above it. The goddess during her crusade gathered Earth's heroes to serve the supreme will, and she too stated that she is nothing more but a mere servant. So who is this entity that is above all the other supreme beings? To get to the true identity and origin of this mysterious character, we'll have to do some digging around. But if you're evaluating this character to be equivalent of a biblical god that is said to be the creator of the universe, then you're somewhat on the wrong track. According to the writers, one above all is described as a unique entity that encompasses the collective efforts of all those who contribute to the Marvel Universe, including writers, artists, editors, and readers. It serves as a reflection of its creation, reflecting the diverse perspectives and creative inputs that shape the Marvel Universe. The one above all was first mentioned by Uatu as a creator who wields love as their only weapon. The idea of the one above all evolved over time, with some readers interpreting it as a powerful and significant force in the Marvel Universe. The author notes that they sometimes create moments that they see as simply nice, but others will analyze them in greater detail, searching for deeper meaning. But the point made by the authors has been continuously expressed in the comics through one above all's speech that goes, I am the one above all. I see through many eyes. I build with many hands. They are themselves, but they are also me. The Defenders encounter with One Above All. Despite being the creator of the Marvel Omniverse and Multiverse, he's barely had 15 appearances altogether, and his famous speech we just talked about is shown in the Defenders Beyond Comic Issue. The comic book appearance is complete with the stereotypical all-white and wide skies of heaven comic panels and, of course, the Defenders. The story starts off with the past Loki from the seventh cosmos peeking through a window of time and seeing the present Loki from the eighth cosmos starting back, searching for the origin of reality. The Defenders journey to the top of the creation and hope the present Loki won't remember the events that are about to occur, which the past Loki has planned since joining the team. Blue Marvel warns everyone to be cautious as they approach one above all, who introduces himself. However, Blue Marvel challenges their statement. One above all presents a group of monsters for the defenders to fight. Miss America Chavez comments on her role as the team's impulsive member, while Tigra mentioned Beyonder's absence. When Loki asks if Taya dislikes monsters, she replies that she enjoys fighting as it distracts her from her son's fate. Blue Marvel's cosmic senses tell him that one above all 
is the ultimate creative force, the greatest power that can be attained. He also believes that if one above all were truly angry, they would have simply erased them with a word instead of putting them through a test by fighting monsters. He believes in a god that questions them and encourages everyone to question one above all in turn. This is proven right when the monsters vanish, and one above all invites Blue Marvel to speak if he has any understanding. Blue Marvel wonders if they are truly above all, and if this is only the start of their journey with One Above All. One Above All explains that they represent the boundary between the world of action and the world of creation, leading Blue Marvel to ask what creates creation and if there is a final guiding hand. To this, One Above All answers that the mystery is of course intriguing and is willing to answer their inquiries. He also informs Talia that Galon's destiny was crafted by them and warns her not to return with that knowledge. They assure America that she will find her sister and more, as nothing that was made is ever truly lost. When Tiger expresses her desire to return home, the all-governing entity tells her that she will go back home only when the storyteller decides on it. Blue Marvel then asks one above all about Eternity's enemy from beyond, all understanding, and then he is shown a glimpse of the Enigma and a crown silhouette formed by joining five images together. Blue Marvel explains to Tigra that the team needs to decipher the cosmic symbol as their minds can only translate it as a crown. Loki, who is a master of riddles, recalls the last time that they saw the crown symbol was on Doctor Strange's magic tarot cards, but he keeps the information to himself, not wanting to ruin the story. Loki helps the defenders and asks to leave, wanting to step outside the multiverse and forge his own path, which was the reason she forced them on the journey in the first place. America objects to Loki leaving, but she points out that the Loki of the 8th Cosmos is doing well and can serve as the primary while she goes on her own way. Cloud suggests that it would be a fair choice after everything that has happened, but ultimately it is still a choice for Loki to make. After the conflict has concluded, the Beyonder shows up just to leave a remark that superheroes have a fondness for combat and destructive behavior. Despite having answered everyone's questions, one above all remained clueless about the biggest mystery of them all, the origin of his own existence. Chaos and Healing at the Edge of Heaven The first comic book appearance of One Above All has now become a sort of dormant debate in the fandom, and most of the sources consider the Fantastic Four issue to be his first legitimate story. It was first featured in Fantastic Four issue number 511. There are many ways to refer to this character because it isn't gender specific in the comics either. The story goes somewhat like this. The Fantastic Four go to heaven in search of Ben Grimm's soul, and during their search they find themselves at the edge of heaven with no way out because there's a door made by Reed's inventions blocking their way. Ben's spirit explains he can't enter because his body is on life support on Earth. Ben wants to stay in the afterlife, but Johnny, fueled by emotion, accuses the spirit of not being the real Ben Grimm as he believes Ben wouldn't be the kind who would give up on his life so easily. Reed and Sue accept Ben's wishes, but Johnny lashes out. They struggle with their emotions and are caught in a fight, and suddenly, ground starts to crack. The entire place starts to fall apart, caused entirely by their overwhelming sadness and disbelief. Reed admits to Johnny that he fears he might kill him, as he did with Ben. Ben strips away the components of the door to reveal another door made of interconnecting bricks, just like Ben's thing form. Ben convinces Reed to pull himself together and try to stop thinking of his sorrows, so that the chaos stops once and for all. Dan offers them the chance to stay in heaven, but Reed declines for his team. The door opens, and they are met with the creator, and the Fantastic Four walk into the light and come face to face with their maker at a wooden door on a floating rock. They are taken aback when they cross the doorway and found themselves in a seemingly ordinary den where a middle-aged man was seen working at a drawing board. This is where they meet their powerful creator, one above all, in the form of Jack Kirby himself. It's not much of a surprise if you're a true fan of the comics because Jack Kirby and Stan Lee love doing this in a lot of their issues, either to deliver a personal message through their cameo or just for the fun of it. No matter what, this has got to be one of the most interesting self-inclusions by Jack Kirby, although he's only referred to as a god in this issue. The god here is shown to be a loving man who invites them in and tells them that his outward appearance is based on how his creations see him and 
that he considered his representation to be a great compliment. God the Creator shows the Fantastic Four that he creates things through his sketches and that he's exploring all of their adventures. It's absolutely magic how by just drawing a picture of an alien city, he transforms their surrounding into an alien landscape depicted in the drawing. God believes that the simplest inventions can be the greatest, such as the eraser at the end of the pencil, which he uses to heal Reed's burn. He also assures the Fantastic Four that they are not puppets, but live their own lives. After resolving their subplot, God returns Ben to his thing form and tells him that there are still many more stories to come. Before sending them back to Earth, he gives them a sketch of themselves many years older with a caption, to be continued, reminding them that they will live happily ever after. Peter Parker meets God. One above all made many appearances in the comics, disguised as different characters. He once disguised himself as a homeless man so he could have a little chat with the downtrodden Peter Parker. In the book of Peter from the 40th issue, we see how Peter Parker is plagued with guilt as he constantly worries that his Aunt May will die as a result of being caught in an attack that's meant for him. The fact that his double life as Spider-Man has led to the death and tragedy of those close to him, such as Uncle Ben and Gwen Stacy adds to his despair. However, he is visited by a mysterious stranger who claims to be God and tells Peter that tragedy affects everyone in some form or another. The stranger also points out that Spider-Man has saved many lives, and this should bring Peter comfort. While this helps to ease some of Peter's guilt, he still feels helpless about the situation. The stranger encourages Peter to have faith and reminds him that others have been asked to endure much more, possibly referring to Jesus Christ. The story ends with Peter living a long and a happy life with his wife, giving Spider-Man a happy conclusion. Is Thanos the new one above all? In the Infinity Ending Trilogy, Thanos and an alternate version of Adam Warlock encountered one above all, the entity that exists outside of time and space. Thanos persuaded the entity to restore the reality in exchange for Adam taking on the duties of the deceased living tribunal. However, when future Thanos began absorbing most of the cosmic beings and causing chaos in the multiverse, the power of the Astral Regulator is too strong, and even though above all others and the Living Tribunal tried to stop him, but were absorbed themselves, making Thanos the personification of all existence. Fortunately, the others helped the present Thanos to regain control and reverse the events, returning the above all others to its normal state. But the true status remains vague in the Marvel comics suggesting that Thanos killed God to become the supreme being of the Marvel Universe. The Dark Counterpart of One Above All the One Below All is an evil force residing in the depths of Hell. It stands in stark contrast to the One Above All, who embodies unity and indivisible endlessness in the universe. This entity remained dormant until Bruce Banner's Gamma Bomb opened a portal, allowing it to access the world and serve as a source of the third form of Gamma Energy. The One Below All can manipulate Gamma mutated beings to act as its avatars and predates the multiverse itself. It is considered the root of all evil and lacks a consciousness driven solely by a desire to destroy everything. Despite being a tool for the One Above All to begin the cycle of creation anew, the One Below All has its own ambition, seeking to eliminate all life and become the sole remaining entity in the multiverse. It harbors a hatred and fear of the mystery and wants to erase all stories from existence. The entity also possessed the body of the Hulk and went on a killing spree, becoming the only being left in the universe after absorbing the power of the sentience of the Eighth Cosmos. The One Below All has a variety of powers, including reality warping and soul manipulation, but remains trapped in the Below Place and must use host bodies to act in the physical world. Despite its immense power, it has a weakness in that it must rely on souls to directly interact with the world. We'll be digging deeper into this through the Immortal Hulk storylines. The Time When the Immortal Hulk Faced the One Below All Brian Banner had a vision of a creature in his dreams seeking him. 
causing him to stop his research on gamma radiation. His son Bruce's investigation led to the creation of a gamma bomb, which turned him into the Hulk and opened a green door to the Below Place. Several years after Bruce killed Brian, Brian's soul entered the Below Place and joined forces with the One Below All, setting into motion a plan to destroy Bruce and the multiverse. The One Below All took control of the gamma mutated jailbait, causing her powers to spiral out of control. Her boyfriend Hotshot held a church congregation hostage to perform last rites on her, claiming that she was possessed by the devil and that she saw a green door. The journey of the One Below All's possession began when Brian took over Sasquatch after being killed in a bar fight and sent him on a rampage. The Hulk tried to stop Sasquatch by draining his gamma power, but ended up getting possessed by Brian instead. Brian manipulated the Hulk into going into the Los Diablos military base, where the gamma bomb had detonated. When Absorbing Man intercepted the Hulk, he absorbed the gamma energy and became possessed himself. He then opened a green door to the below place. Once in the below place, the Hulk was separated from Bruce and Brian took him captive with the intention of using him as a vessel for the one below all. On his journey, the Hulk encountered manifestations of Rick Jones and Thaddeus Ross, leading to his savage Hulk persona briefly appearing. The one below all was ready to take over Bruce's body when the sun rose. It summoned a horde of demons that the Hulk and Rick Jones manifestation confronted. While Puck and Absorbing Man approached Brian in the foundation of Gamma Energy, where he was holding Bruce. Absorbing Man absorbed the Gamma Energy and gave it to the Hulk, allowing him to regain his strength and defeat the One Below All with a thunderclap. The Hulk merged back with Bruce and closed the green door, sending everyone back to Earth. One Below All possesses Hulk to go on a killing spree. The One Below All successfully took control of the Hulk and obliterated Bruce Banner's soul. Over time, it went on to conquer numerous formable entities such as Galactus, Franklin Richards, Mr. Immortal, and others, ultimately becoming the only being in existence. The One Below All then enticed the sentience of the Eighth Cosmos and absorbed its power, leading to the creation of the Ninth Cosmos. With the power of Devoured Entity, the One Below All transformed the Hulk into the Breaker of Worlds, a force capable of destroying all life in the universe. Ten billion years later, the Breaker of Worlds encountered an alien who tried to communicate with it, but was promptly killed by the One Below All. The leader, a gamma-powered villain, learned of the One Below All's ultimate victory through a message sent back in time by the alien. With the intention of making this future a reality, the leader gains access to the One Below All through his possession of Brian's soul. He infiltrates Bruce Banner's mind and forces him and the Devil Hulk into a below place. The One Below All takes control of the leader and merges with Bruce Banner and the Devil Hulk. However, the Hulks manage to escape and seek the help of the Fantastic Four to enter the below place through the Forever Gate. The Hulk successfully extract the leader from within the One Below All and return it to the previous form of a mindless force. The One Above All explains to the Savage Hulk that he serves as a counterweight to their creations, tearing things down so they can be rebuilt. The Hulk chooses to reject his role as a counterweight and rescues the leader, leaving the below place with Bruce and Joe. The green doors are closed, preventing the future where the One Below All triumphs. Other memorable comic book story arcs featuring this god-level entity. So you might be wondering how the Devil Hulk's origin is tied to the One Below All. Well, the answer is quite simple. Hulk allowed One Below All to escape its dark domain by opening the green door to its realm, and by letting the Gamma Rays mutate him into a vessel, allowing One Below All to release a part of itself into Bruce Banner, thus creating the Hulk. Since it has no distinct form, but can take shape in anything it chooses, often appearing in frightening and abstract ways, it chose Hulk because why not? In the comics, the true form of the One Below All is depicted as a green smoke-like mass resembling a gamma bomb explosion symbolizing its destructive nature and connection to the harmful events of gamma radiation in the Marvel world. Is Hulk the new Venom? Or is Venom the new Hulk? Bruce Banner takes a seat in a chair he's set down in the middle of a dark, empty space, trying to talk to the Venom symbiote. He introduces himself and reminds the symbiote of their past encounter. 
Bruce believes that he, the symbiote, and his different personas can reach an agreement that benefits all of them. He understands that the symbiote may have trust issues due to the past damage, so Bruce decides to explain his current circumstances. Bruce had awoken in a motel room in California a few days ago with a note from Joe Fixit instructing him not to contact Betty Ross, Rick Jones, or Jackie McGee. Irritated by Joe's characterization of him, Bruce checks on Betty and is horrified to find her in her harpy form with Rick's body in a bathtub. Betty tells him to seek information from Jackie and shuts the door in his face. Bruce talks to Jackie, who has difficulty trusting, and as he watches the news, he learns that the body of Thaddeus Ross has been taken from its grave with the residue of red goo found at the site. He suspects that either the shadow base is responsible for the robbery, or an even more dangerous force is at play. Bruce's recollection of events is disrupted by the arrival of Joe Fixit in his mindscape. Joe complains about not being in his Grey Hulk form and goes to awaken Bruce's other personalities. Bruce explains that gamma mutated beings who die are resurrected and linked to a malevolent entity called the One Below All, which can take control of them upon resurrection. He reveals to Betty that Thaddeus Ross's body has disappeared, but he is afraid that she will attack him like she did with Rick's handlers. Betty confirms that she can track Ross, and when Bruce asks for a ride, she declines and snaps his neck, causing Bruce's soul to confront the one below all. The Devil Hulk takes over and watches as Betty flies away. At an old mental institute in New Jersey, the body of Thaddeus Ross lies among other corpses in a spiral-shaped pit. The Savage Hulk appears and lashes out at Bruce for turning Betty into a monster. The Devil Hulk overhears two paramedics talking about Angelo Fortunato, a former host of the Venom symbiote, and decides to find Spider-Man to find Venom. Spider-Man saves Bruce from a falling water tower and provides him with new clothes. Bruce asks for an update on Venom and learns that Cletus Cassidy has returned and is collecting codices to unleash Null, an ancient and darker elder god. Bruce speaks to the Venom symbiote and believes that Null is a pawn of the Demiurge. But the Devil Hulk warns against getting involved. Bruce recounts his survival to Captain America and introduces himself to Eddie Brock. The Devil Hulk protests working with the symbiote, but Bruce makes a case for collaboration and gains the support of Joe Fixit and Savage Hulk. The Devil Hulk storms off, but Bruce welcomes Venom to their group as the Venomized Savage Hulk dominates outside. How powerful is this cosmic entity? The Immortal Hulk series revealed the true nature of the One Below All as the evil counterpart of One Above All created to bring balance to the multiverse. The Marvel Comics multiverse is under the watchful eye of the One Above All, the ultimate creator, while the One Below All serves as the ultimate destructor. These two beings are actually the same entity, with the One Below All acting as an evil counterpart to balance out the ever-expanding multiverse. They represent the ultimate deity with supreme power over all existence. One above all embodies pure good and love with the ability to see and act through many eyes, and its only weapon is love. It works behind the scenes and is rarely seen. On the other hand, the one below all is the physical manifestation of evil, chaos, and destruction with hate as its weapon, while the one above all is seen as the more powerful of the two as it has true omnipotence both beings are equally powerful in their own right. The one above all is a being of pure good, love, and creation, while the one below all represents pure evil, hate, and destruction. Ultimately, the true nature and relative power of these two beings are still a mystery. Conclusion All we can understand from this is that they coexist for the sole purpose of bringing balance to the universe, thus becoming the most powerful character in the entire Marvel Universe. One above all is beyond all understanding. It encompasses anything and everything, including the subversion of all ideas. His existence is quite a contradiction in and of itself. If he transcends all concepts, does he also transcend himself? So as the creator of the universe, did he also create himself? Well, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. And in the meantime, have a good one and be safe. Thank you, everybody.